Hey guys and welcome back to another Imagine 4 tutorial. Today is the first part of a new series I'm making for a kind of John Wick inspired shooter mini game. So what we're going to be making in this is an enemy spawner, the enemies will always run at the player, the player can't die and they have unlimited ammo but they do need to reload, we've got death counters, timers, shooting, muzzle flash, sound effects, blood, all this different great stuff which we're going to learn to make in this series so it's just a nice introduction to third person shooting with a nice little mini game which we can make. So this is what we're we'll making and today this is going to be the first part where I'm setting up the project so creating it, adding in sprinting and also adding in any extra stuff we're going to need for example content from the marketplace. So without further ado let's get right into it. So to create the project we're going to press the games category here under new project categories and hit next and I'm going to go with the third person template because I want it to be a third person shooter so third person is going to have everything that we need. So then I'm going to press next again, place this where you want so for me it's just going to be in the E folder which is going to be fine and we can name it what we want as well so I'm just going to name it TPS underscore minigame for third person shooter minigame. Again name this whatever you like and place it wherever you like as well. And we also want to make sure that we're using blueprints, maximum quality, I'm not going to use ray tracing because my graphics card doesn't do that but obviously if you want ray tracing then go for it. And also desktop console and we are going to use the start content as well. So then we're going to hit create project and this will now load up the project ready for us to build in. So I'll get back to you once this is loaded. So my project is just loaded and as you can see we've got this simple project here with the start content, third person content as well and we can obviously hit play and we can move around where we want. So I'm going to go into a new viewport here and we can just move around, jump and all that great stuff. So what I'm going to do is exit this and I'm going to open up the Epic Games Launcher down here. Let me just bring it onto screen. And what we're going to do is go to Unreal Engine here, then go to the library, or for you it might be Marketplace actually if you don't have these. So we'll go to the Marketplace first to show you which ones we need to get. And I will leave a link in the description down below to these assets on the Marketplace for you to use and download. So let's go full screen. And we're going to search products and what we're going to get first is the animation starter pack. So search for animation starter pack and you can see we want this one here by Epic Games and it is free. So we're just going to click on it and what you want to do is you want to make sure that you download it I believe it's called or it's either buy or get and then download. But essentially it is free, you don't need to pay for it and you can use it in your games. And then we're going to go back and we're going to search again. This time we're going to search for the infinity I believe it's called. So infinity blade and then colon space effects I believe is the name. Yeah this is the one here. Infinity blade effects also free also by Epic Games. And you can see we have all these different great effects which we want to use here. The reason we're using this one is because we have a nice muzzle flash already in here for us to use which is going to be great. So again do the same thing of getting that. And now we're going to go over to the library tab up here. So you can add them there but it's easier through the library. And we're going to scroll down and now you can see this is where we have our vault which is full of all the different assets from the marketplace. So you can see I have quite a lot, I rarely use them but a lot of them are free so it's best to get them anyway. So let's find the animation starter pack which is here. We're going to press add to project, search for the one we have, so mine is TPS minigame select it and hit add to project and what that's going to do is it's going to load while it's adding that to our project which we've just set up and mine has just crashed probably because of recording so I'll send and restart and do that again again probably just because I've started recording so GPU CPU is all being used so I'll get back to you once that one has worked so that's really strange for some reason it keeps crashing I'm not too sure why because I haven't experienced this issue before but I'll get back to it at some point I have managed to add the anim starter pack but for some reason I now can't add the Infinity Blade effects onto it. Again, I'm not sure why it just keeps crashing. Uh, but again, I'll get back to it in the future. As long as you can add it, that's fine. So again, search for the Animation Starter Pack. Add to Project. Search for your project. And then press it, Add to Project. And then do the same also for the Infinity Blade effects here. Add to Project. Find your projects. And then add to Project there. And that is going to work perfectly for what we want to do. Make sure you've added them in. Hopefully you won't have the same issue I'm having of it crashing. Again, not sure why I'm experiencing that. But I have added them into a different project before so I know those packs do work. I think there's probably just something weird going on right now. Maybe with the launcher, maybe with my own reel. 
maybe with my PC, I'm not sure. But I don't need to show you those in today's video because we're not using them today, we're just adding them into the project. And once you have added those into the project, what we're going to do is we're going to add in our sound effects. So I'm going to open these up and again I'll leave a link in the description down below to where you can download them from. So to import them, very simply what we can do is just select them all in our folder and then drag and drop them in to Unreal here and then there you go, we have now imported them in. So at the moment the only sound effects I have are these gunshots here. We might be adding more in the future, we might not, I'm not sure. But if we do, then I'll also link those in the description in the video where we use them. But again, to start with, we're just going to be using these. So I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this one Game Files, like so. I'm going to right click on that, set its color to be a nice yellow, just so it's easy to see, so it's nice and golden. I'm going to select these gunshot sound effects, drag them to move them into that folder. In that folder, I'm again going to make another folder, naming this one Sound Effects. Then we're going to drag these sound effects into there, like so. And let's have a listen to what these are like. So we've just got four nice different sound effects for shooting a gun, so it doesn't sound too repetitive, it's nice and dynamic when we are shooting. Which again, we'll go over in a future video. Now the final part of today's video is we're going to be setting up the sprinting. Now the reason I'm not doing this in a different video is because it's very very simple and not necessary for this, you don't have to have it if you don't want to. And actually what we're also doing, sorry, is with the Anim starter pack, we're going to be using a different character. So we're not using third person character here. We're going to go into the Anim starter pack and then scroll down until we find a UE4 ASP character. That is the character blueprint we are going to be using. So what I'm going to do is press this button here to show all the sources panels, dragging the character blueprint into game files, move here, and then we're going to go into the game files folder, right click, add a new folder again, naming this character, and I'm going to move that in there so we have nice easy access to it. Also what we want to do is on the right here we've got world settings. If you don't have that, go to window at the top and then press world settings there and it will open it up for you. Under game mode we want to make sure game mode override is set to third person game mode, selected game mode, open it up and set the default pawn class to be our new character which we have here. So now we're going to be using that character instead of the default third person character. So now if we hit play we're going to be playing along as this one which gives us these nice third person shooter animations we have here. And we're going to close that like so. We're also then going to double click to open up our character blueprint here and let's finish setting this up. So I said that was the last part, it's not actually not, we do have a little bit more to go. So you can see we have a compiler error up here and that will be because this has an action mapping which we haven't got a name for yet, which is crouching. So let's set that up now. We're going to go to edit in the top left and project settings. Once this loads we're going to go down under engine to input and create an action mapping here. So we're going to hit the plus action mapping naming this crouch so it's spelled the exact same way as this one here and I'm going to set this to be the C key and the control key. So you can set these to whatever you like I'm setting it to C and left control like so, so those are the buttons you press for crouching. Then I'm going to hit the plus action mapping again to make another new one and I'm going to name this one sprint or sprinting or run or whatever you like and I'm going to set this one to be left shift. And so what it does is essentially whenever we press one of these buttons, so if we press C or left control, it will fire off a crouch action mapping. If we press left shift, it will fire off a sprint action mapping and that means we're going to set up any code we want off of that action mapping and these buttons will fire it off. So I'm going to close that like so. If we compile, that compiler error has now gone and it's working perfectly for how we want. So crouching is already built in for us by default in this character. Also when you hit play you can see we have this kind of outline around the player, that is the capsule component. So to get rid of that we can just select the capsule component here, tick hidden in game, compile, hit play and now it's gone. This looks a lot better already. Two more things that I want to do is I want to set up sprinting and I want to also give the player a gun because as you can see we don't have a gun we just have a position to be holding one. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up sprinting first. So just underneath this crouching what I'm going to do is right click and search for sprint and you can see we have our action mapping there. So search for whatever you named that. I'm going to get that and very simply I'm going to drag in the character movement here. Out of this set max walk speed 
like so, as that is how we change the speed of the player, so how we run and stop running. Connecting that into pressed, I'm going to duplicate it to get another one into released, making sure to connect the character movement into target. I'm going to compile and save. So how do we now find the values which we want for the player's speed? Well if we select the character movement in the components list, we can search for set max walk speed, sorry just max walk speed not set, you can see by default it is 270. So released of the sprint action mapping, we want to set to 270 so that is our normal walking speed. So sprinting, so the top one, just wants to be faster than that. So I'm going to set it to 450. You can set it to whatever you like, but I think those values are going to be fine for me. We compile, save and test this out. So we can walk around, hold shift, we're going to be a little faster, let go of shift and we'll go back down. However that didn't look like that actually worked. So let's double check our action mapping here to make sure this is working. And sorry, I've just set it to left. So I needed to be left shift. I just set it to left. So that's why that didn't work. So left shift there. Now we'll close this, hit play again. You might have noticed me do that to start with. So now we'll test this out. We walk like this, hold shift, we're going faster, and let go. We're going back to our normal walk speed. So again, you can customize these to get them perfect for you to change the speeds different for how you want. And you can also obviously set up your own animations as well but I'm not going to go over animations too much in this. I do have a lot of other videos going over that. So now the final thing I want to set up is, well also let me comment that, sorry. Uh, but the final thing is I want to add a gun to the player character. Compile save and we can do this very easily. So what I'm going to do is go back to my game files. I'm going to add new, this big green button here above the content browser. Add a feature or content pack and we're going to add the first person content because what that's going to do is that's just going to give us the gun which is used in the first person character. Now you can obviously use your own gun as well if you want to, it will work the exact same way, but I just want to use theirs, so I'm going to add that to my project. So that's now open that up, we can go to content, first person, FP weapon, mesh, and you can see we have the skeletal mesh FP gun there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead open up the character blueprint. So I'm going to go to content, first person VP, blueprints, first person character reason I'm doing this is so we can then just select the FP gun in here so select it in the viewport control C and we're going to control V to duplicate this into our character reason I'm doing that is just because it has all the settings which we might want on there so it's got the location rotation scale everything which we want just so it's set up already for us again making our lives easier go back to the R character blueprint go to the viewport select anywhere in the components list hit control V and you can see it's above the player's head. What I'm going to do is drag this onto the mesh like so, so it's now parented to the mesh, and I also want to make sure it's parented to one of the player's hands. So I'm going to search here and just get hand R or L, so I'm going to go for the right hand there. And I'm also just going to reset the location and rotation like so. So now we have this gun here, and as you can see it is moving along with the hand here because it is parented to it. So now we've just got the fiddly job of moving it into the correct position which we want. So let me rotate it first and then move it into position. I'm also going to turn off snapping for moving and rotating just so I can be a bit more precise with where I want this to go. So I'm going to move it down a bit as well. I think that position is going to be good. Let me rotate it a little more and then I'll need to move it again as well. I'm also going to lower my camera speed so I can get a bit more precise with where I want to go. Just again, make sure this looks perfect for how I want. So I think this is going to be good. We've got the rotation, so it's sitting in both hands. We've got the finger going on the trigger there as well, with these fingers as close as we're going to get into the holder. So you see, this is going to be good. The player character is now holding a gun, moving along with where the hands go as well. So this is going to look perfect for me. Again, you can get as precise with that as you want, but for me that's going to be fine. I'm going to compile, save, Hit play, and now you can see we have a gun as well. While we're moving around, this gun is going to follow us, looking great and perfect, and we have sprinting as well. So everything which we want by default in here, for us to use later on, is now set up in here. So there is obviously other stuff which we need to add and need to do as well, but we'll do that when we get around to it. I just wanted to get a base part of this setup for us to go forward making this project. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. We've simply just added in a few content packs, so we've got the animation starter pack and we've also got the infinity blade effects pack which obviously I can't add just yet 
but I'll do that off camera because I'll show you how to do it. And we've set up a bit of folder organization, also adding the first person character. So we now have our own character with sound effects and a gun as well. And obviously we'll set up the gun properly and the sound effects and all that in a future video. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.